Welcome, everybody, to this Friday, May 6, 2016 edition of TNZ Talk. I am the T in TNZ, Tony Truppiano. Uh With me as well today is my co-host extraordinary. And uh, I'm going to say I'm going to do it differently because he always interrupts me. Um, the uh, premier blogger for the Huffington Post and Liberals Unite, Richard Zombeck. And Richard, I actually have a, a little announcement to make, Z. Do you? I forgot to mention this, uh, this to you earlier. Uh, as you know, yesterday morning, I was a guest on the USA Radio Networks um, on their morning show. And uh, they called me uh, mid-afternoon yesterday and asked me if I'd be willing to do every Friday at 7.23 a.m. Eastern Time. No kidding. So I will be a, I will be a regular guest on that show every Friday at seven twenty three a.m. Eastern Time. Well, that's exciting. Yes, it is exciting. I was actually <clears throat> really quite honored. Um, I'm kind of I'm that, I'm a little surprised that you didn't tell me that. In fact, I'm a little I might even be a little offended. I'm sad. Um, I'm saddened by it. You know, I thought, and I thought, mean, I thought we you know, were bugs. It's a lot on my mind on the, la- the last 24 hours. And so <laughs> amongst all the uh, the forlorn news, um, the good stuff, I guess, there was only one good thing got uh, got suppressed. But uh, at least I'm not a Republican. I, I've got that in my favor <laughs> this morning. At least, at least that wasn't your announcement. I I also have an announcement, Tony. Okay. We have – now, we're not live anymore, but we do have a call-in number. We have a call-in number that people can call and leave a voicemail that if they are um, – uh, they don't have to be polite, uh, but if they don't swear, <laughs> if they don't swear and it doesn't take me a lot of work to beep everything out, um, they can call the number. And it's uh, – the number is on the website. By the way, uh, you can go to the website at tnztalk.com and find out how to support us, how to follow us. Uh, also, all our archives from the podcast are up there. But the new number that we have is uh, 559-898-2551. And that comes out to, if you like wordy uh, telephone numbers, it's uh, 559-TZ-TALK-1. How, cool how long did it take you to figure? How long did it take you to figure that out? Just uh, be not, honest. Not not long. Okay. It actually took me longer to figure out that I had done that a couple of months ago, and we had we've had the number <laughs> we've we've had the number for a while, and then I had to I had to bring up my uh, my phone screen to figure out the letters and go oh look at that I did five five nine tz talk one how cool All is right. that. Uh, yeah, so can... five five nine is the area code eight nine eight two five five one, which is five five nine T Z talk one. Correct, sir. You are correct. Okay. I I actually have a Google number that uh, comes out to Zombeck. It's I'm not going to wow. give out I'm not going to give out the area code because I don't want people calling me, but it's something 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 Zombeck. Okay. <laughs> as long as it's not something, something, something Trump, you're okay. <laughs> no, you need seven. You need seven numbers. What did you have for lunch yesterday, by the way? Uh, I don't think I had lunch. Or, I was going to say, or did you have lunch? Well, Donald Trump had a taco bowl in he, he um, did. support of Hispanics. He put a wall around his taco. Um, and it was really funny because somebody from Eater went into the Trump Grill and ordered that taco bowl and said that it was as flavorless as he is bland. <laughs> hey, you want to um, I, I have a couple clips. You want to hear a couple things that we're not going to be hearing at a Trump rally? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. That that's one. 
And, and, then, <laughs> and, and they'll also be this. Those are you're bad. <laughs> those are those are both songs that uh, that the Donald was playing at his uh, his his venues, his events, his extravaganzas, I love his, you. Uh, his his KKK meetings. Um, he'll be he'll be he he won't be playing those anymore because the Rolling Lee, Stones. Are you there? I am here. Well, we're having a. Uh, minor technical difficulty. I just can't hear Richard Zombeck right now. He went totally dark. <clears throat> so uh, I'll let him work that out on his end, as apparently he can hear me in the wonderful world of uh, technology. All right. Well, we did have some technical difficulties, but we're back. And uh, Richard Zombeck, being the genius that he is, and my abusing uh, his talents once again, we'll have to patch something together. But uh, anyway, you were playing the Rolling Stones tunes and reminding us that uh, Donald Trump can't use them anymore. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. And actually, I was watching his uh, his uh, Trumpapalooza yesterday and he was using um tiny dancer which i'd be surprised that elton john would be okay with him using his songs and then since he was west in west virginia he used uh, a john denver song too um take me home country roads which if john denver has a foundation uh or a family i'd be surprised if they were going to be okay with him using his song so I think the only thing he's left with at this point is uh, probably some Ted Nugent songs. And I'm sure Teddy would be happy to even write a song or two. Oh, no, <laughs> he wouldn't. He hasn't written anything original in years. Well, and this is you a know, guy I was, that I, I was saying statutory when, when, rape uh, and... Well, he's just a whack job. I mean, how many people do you know uh, own a compound, um, ship in wild game... So that he can kill them. Yeah. Well, well, and here's the thing, too, right? There was an editor for Rolling Stone on MSNBC yesterday talking about Trump's choice of music. And, you know, Start Me Up was originally a reggae song. So that doesn't really fit. And Brown Sugar is about um, heroin, prostitutes and slavery. So, again, not entirely appropriate. Well, for Donald Trump, that would be. <laughs> I'm just saying, as yeah. as long as they were tense, you know, I, I was uh, b before technology uh, kind of rammed it up our uh, rear ends a little while ago. I don't ever recall a Democratic candidate or a politician that was told by an artist not to use their music. And I could be wrong ever. All right. So I wasn't I mean, to your knowledge, that's true, right? To my knowledge, that is true. I mean, we'd have to look it up, and I'm sure, I'm sure we'll we'll get uh, you'll at least get emails. You seem to get more hate emails than I do. Uh, uh, people are and, used to hate e emailing me, though. Well, and usually, but usually your hate emails are about me. Tell Zombeck he doesn't have to use www in front of the website. We don't need that uh, anymore. It's the 21st century, and now they can call us. They can call us at 559-898-2551, Tony. Or TZ Talk 1. I like right. TZ Talk 1. 559-TZ uh, Talk 1. Actually, yeah. Not TZ, <laughs> not sleazy. TZ. Right, TZ. Um, all right. Well, listen, we're going to have a truncated version of the show today because I'm going to go hang out with Cecile Richards, who is the national president of Planned Parenthood, and give her a big hug for what uh, Congress put her through a few months ago, um, which is was just ridiculous. Lucky, uh, but, lucky you. Yeah, I actually, I'm looking forward to it. But looking at our audio list, I'm going to start with uh, at a place where you probably wouldn't expect me to. Uh, and it's not Paul Ryan, and it's not Obama. It's not Newt Lou Dobbs or Louis Gohmert, although we'll definitely get to Louis Gohmert because he's your favorite, Z. It's Rob Reiner. I love me some Louie. Uh, yes, you do. 
And Rob Reiner was on the Morning Joe show yesterday. And I don't know that that interview went quite the way Joe and Mika thought it might. How do you explain, as much as we like to think that the entire country watches this show every morning, we, we oh, dictate how people vote. How a lot of people do watch the show, but, and it is kind of a but, news show of record. It for, is. It is. Yeah. It, that, that is true. Yeah. But how do you explain the millions and millions of people who do not watch this show, who actually like what they hear from Donald Trump and aren't taking messages and orders from us in the media, but they listen right. to what he says for themselves and vote for him? How do you explain that? Uh, well, there, there are a lot of people who are racist. Oh, my God. Country. Did you just I'm say not, that? I'm not saying. I'm no, not, you just said that. Well, that's true. So you think that people saying, that no, vote for Donald think, Trump are they're racist? They're not all racist. You led with that, though. No, I said there are a lot of people who are. Okay. There's racism in this country that has been submerged for a long, long time. Right. And all of a sudden, there's a man. So he's who's unearthed speaking, it? He's unearthed a lot of it. Let, put, let, let me say this. Could this not be wait, wait, about working class Americans being yes. left behind yes. by a Republican Party yes. that's always talking about? Yes. I mean, okay. And let me say this to that. There are those that are following Bernie Sanders that feel the same way. They're racist. They're, no. Oh. Do you see any racist people at the Bernie rallies? Do you well, see any skinheads? I can't see into their hearts. Well, no, but you can see if somebody's got a, 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 a tattoo with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a swastika and stuff. Come on, Joe, be honest here. Let, <laughs> no, seriously. I am being seriously. honest here. We're trying. I, you, I am no, not, no, 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 I'm not no, no, going to call wait people wait racist. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Candidate. If you're a candidate and you've been one right. and you're standing there and there are people in your rally who are are KKK members, okay. members of the Aryan nation, uh, white supremacist. If I were you, I would say, you know, I don't really want that support. That's hate speech. I, That's I hate would, mongering. I, do that. I don't want that support. Right, very good. I don't see Donald Trump saying, I don't want that support. He's saying, fine. I don't know who David Duke, maybe he is. Oh, I disavow. We, we, were, we were harshly critical I understand, of that but, as well. But there is... Just, but That's you, to answer Willie's question. There's a strain no. of racism okay, there. But, but they're not all racist. No, they're not all racist. Okay. They're not all racist, but there is so a strain Rob, there. Uh, wow. Uh, it, it, it got pretty contentious. And um, I, I will say, as I was watching that yesterday morning, I don't, did you actually watch it or did you just happen to see it uh, somewhere? I, ju I just happened to see it when I was cruising through, when I was cruising through some looking for audio. Well, you know, the conversation started with a movie that you will find interesting that Rob Reiner uh, produced and directed about opiate abuse and heroin abuse. Um, and then it, 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 it evolved. I was going to say devolved, but it what didn't evolve. It evolved into this discussion, uh, part of which you just played. Uh, it got really heated even more after that, uh, which... I was, you know, pretty proud of Rob Reiner. Meathead did good, Z. Me Meathead, Meathead. Well, he's, he's used to dealing with Archie Bunker, you know, which is what we have. I mean, here's the thing, right? And this is this is just my 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 personal take on this is for some reason, and you might know this reason better than I do because you've, you know, I've I've been writing for a long time, but you've been audioing and videoing for a long time in the news. And I, um, <clears throat> there seems to be in the media, this, um, need, um, or aversion to talking about racism in this country as if it exists, right? Like they, like a lot of the media seems to be unwilling to discuss that media that I'm sorry, that racism actually exists in this country and that people are motivated uh, through by by bigotry and racism. And so Rob Rob Reiner is simply stating the obvious as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, I said this at the beginning of of uh, of Trump, uh, Trump announcing his his nomination that uh he uh he was bringing the cockroaches out and isn't this great and we can see them now and then three months into it i said holy cow there are a ton of cockroaches and rob reiner's absolutely right 
I mean, you see people with swastikas and, and black armbands and Heil Hitler uh, putting their arms out, uh, and then he doesn't disavow it. And he's got he's got the racist vote. I don't know. I mean, what what do you think? Well, uh, you know, certainly, and I think uh, key to uh, the whole Trump movement is the different factions that have embraced him. Uh, you know, the bikers, um, the they who, by the way, have become the self imposed security. Are you aware of that? Uh, no. There is a group of, and I, and I, I believe it's an organized group, and I don't think it's the same group in every state, but there are a group of bikers that act as security at Trump events, mostly outside of venues, and they have their own special way of vetting people that show up. I'll just leave it there. Well, and, you know, going back to our, our intro, uh, the Rolling Stones uh, did the same thing and it didn't go too well. Right. They, they hired they hired the Hells Angels as security for their show and paid them in beer and uh, other dry goods. And um, people got almost killed. I just, I don't see where ultimately this is heading in a positive way. Um, now, with that said, um, maybe it's time we do play the Paul Ryan audio and then we'll have that discussion because there's a lot of reaction uh, from different sections of the political universe today. Van Jones, Seth Meyers... Uh, Lou Dobbs, Louis Gohmert, Bill O'Reilly. We'll get to as much of that as we can, but let's start with, I think Paul Ryan's a great jumping off point. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, former Republican Vice Presidential nominee, Paul Ryan. Speaker Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Jake. How are you doing today? So, Mr. Speaker, you have said throughout this process that you will support the Republican presidential nominee. Now you have a presumptive nominee, Donald Trump. Will you support him? Well, uh, to be perfectly candid with you, Jake, uh, I'm just not ready to do that at this point. I'm not there right now. Uh, and I hope to, though, and I want to. But I think what is required is that we unify this party. And I think the bulk of the burden on unifying the party um, will have to come from our presumptive nominee. Um, I don't want to underplay what he accomplished. He, he needs to be congratulated for an enormous accomplishment for winning not now a plurality of delegates, and he's on his way to winning a majority of delegates. But he also inherited something very special uh, that's very special to a lot of us. Uh, this is the party of Lincoln, of Reagan, of Jack Kemp. And we don't always nominate a Lincoln and a Reagan every four years. Um, but we hope that our nominee um, aspires to be Lincoln and Reagan-esque, um, that that person um, advances the principles um, of our party and appeals to a, a wide, vast majority of Americans. And so I think what is necessary to make this work, to, for this to unify, is to actually take our principles and advance them. And that's what we want to see. Saying we're unified doesn't in and of itself unify us, but actually taking the principles that we all believe in, showing that there's a dedication to those, and running a principal campaign that Republicans can be proud about, and that can actually appeal to a majority of Americans, that to me is what it takes to unify this party. So you're saying you can't, you can't support or endorse him right now? Yeah, I am basically saying that. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Now, he has gone on to clarify his comments by saying that Trump needs to prove his principles. People can, uh, you know, uh, decipher that any way uh, they care to, Z. Uh, but at the end of the day, I really do believe that uh, you know, and despite what I heard on the Morning Joe show this morning, Joe Scarborough said, oh, there's always going to be a feeling out period. And, you know, this is real. You, you wouldn't want Paul Ryan to say, well, yeah, now I'm on board because, you know, you know that that wouldn't be sincere. Um, yeah, it's politics, dude. And that's kind of the way it works. I don't know where we go from here. Well, I mean, 
is any I don't know how anyone is like surprised. I mean, everyone seems just kind of shocked. It's like, I can't believe you're not supporting the nominee. Uh, well, it's Donald effing Trump, for God's sakes. Right. I mean, I was thinking about this last night and I don't know why I hadn't thought of this earlier, but let's I mean, look at just the last look at just the last eight years. Right. How the Republican Party has treated this president, how they voted against things that are good for society, how they're fundamentally against helping people, um, how they're fundamentally for corporations and big money. Now, you and I are old enough to remember uh, a different Republican Party, right? Um, Maybe not as cruel, uh, not as uh, bombastic, prone prone to hyperbole, uh, obviously and evidently in a lot of cases uh, racist, uh, xenophobic, homophobic. You and I are old enough to remember uh, when the Republican Party wasn't quite like that, or at least it wasn't their entire ranks. The kids that grew up during Obama that couldn't even vote uh, when Obama became president and are able to vote now, the younger generation, the 20s and 30s, uh, the, the, the millennials, if you will, this is all they've seen of the Republican Party. So when they have this orange freak that's saying he's going to build a wall, that he's going to keep all Muslims out of the country, when a lot of their friends are Muslim, black, Hispanic, when, when color of a person's skin isn't as important as it was to people in our generation uh, and the generation before, the Republican Party uh, really looks like a bunch of just hateful people to a lot of these kids particularly that nobody's really paying attention to the news or to politics. They're, they're seeing, they're, they go strictly by social media and they're watching this guy come to power with a Republican party that's basically backing him for the most part. Um, you know, what, what does that say for their future? It looks pretty grim. Now the question now, and I'll throw it back to you very quickly. Will that motivate them to get out and vote? That 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 again, excellent question. I mean, I I, th- I think what's going to happen because it's we've seen it happen historically in and again I don't really care if I piss somebody off. Uh, I don't think it will motivate them to get out and vote. I think especially with young people. I'm going to go back to the midterms. And, in fact, one of the women that is the host for the event I'm going to right after the show today uh, was at a clothing retailer that uh, uh, millennials would shop at. And she asked the young salesman right after the midterms, did you, uh, you know, who did you support, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, we had a gubernatorial race in the midterms, as many states do. And uh, he said, oh, I supported uh, the Democratic candidate. Oh, did you vote for him? Oh, no, I don't bother to vote. Yeah. But I did volunteer for him. And she goes, well, why would you volunteer and not vote? He goes, oh, my vote doesn't matter. Right. And he really believed that. I mean, he said it like it was a matter of fact. Right. And this is something you and I talked about almost a year ago, is that why isn't the Democratic Party getting the, the get out the vote uh why aren't they? Why didn't they start that six I months ago, that, nine months I ago? I don't know that we can put that on the Democratic Party, though. Uh, there's an effort. I mean, you know, listen. I, you know, uh, talk to young people, and I encourage them to vote. And I, as you know, do a lot of public speaking, uh, and I'm always astounded by how many people in their 20s and early 30s just don't make the time to vote. Even though they're passionate about the issues, they show up to rallies and in meetings and uh, they do volunteer their time, etc. Um, I'm astounded by how many of them are either A, not registered to vote, or B, just don't bother to. And we can have that further, uh, that, that discussion uh, in, in greater detail some other time, as I'm sure we will, as we continue 
to come back to it. But again, well, and I just got, I just got a sinking feeling in my stomach that there's a very real chance that Trump could become the president. <laughs> yes, I mean, listen, it is possible that Donald Trump could become the president. Um, I'm going to go back to last June when he announced, and you and I were doing, uh, when you were on with me just weekly when I was doing my own show, and you and I were guffawing about Donald Trump's announcement and what a fool he made of himself and how you can't say what he said and think that you're going to be the nominee. Now, I got to tell you, as I was watching MSNBC early yesterday afternoon, they played some video of uh, right after the seven, the field of 17 were kind of solidified. Donald Trump was polling at 1%. Carly Fiorina was polling better than Donald Trump. Ben Carson was in double digits. Who's the nominee? Well, and here's... Okay, so... While you were talking and while I was getting that sinking feeling in my stomach, I was I was doing some numbers and these probably aren't entirely accurate. But for the sake of argument, uh, we <laughs> we we have um, what was he getting? Forty percent of the Republican vote right on polling and in primaries, 40 to 50 percent. Uh, they make up the Republicans, about a third of the electorate, uh, about, depending on the election, 30 to 40 percent of the total electorate in this country actually come out to vote. And he's running at a 65 percent disfavorable. And all of those numbers logically should say that he has no chance of becoming president. But What we know and have seen about the electorate and who actually comes out to vote, and let's add voter suppression on top of that for kids in college, uh, anyone with uh, brown-colored skin uh, is being basically blocked from voting, Uh, voter ID laws, uh, taking all that into consideration, as confusing as all that probably is sounds the way that I just said it, there is actually a possibility uh, that we could have uh, President Trump. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's the bottom line is, yes, we could have a President Trump, no question about it. And anyway, um, there's a lot of audio. I'll, I'll let you decide what you want to do next. Um I, I know you're a big Louis Gohmert fan, so if you want to go there next, but that's up to you. You can do Bill O'Reilly, you can do Seth Meyers, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, let's do Gohmert, and at some point, I, I do want to listen to this this Van Jones because I'd I'd like us to talk about it. And we've only got uh, about twelve minutes left here, or well, no, a little more. But anyway, here's here's Louis Gohmert, um, uh, unfortunately, talking. Trump wins, cruises out, and now there is a call for unity in the GOP. RNC chair Reince Priebus tweets this. Donald Trump will be presumptive GOP nominee. We all need to unite and focus on defeating Hillary Clinton. Joining us now, Congressman Louis Gohmert, Republican from Texas, who was a cruise guy. Are you now adopting the call for unity and getting behind Donald Trump? Louis, tell us. Well... Uh, Yes to the first part and not yet to the second part. Yes, I've adopted the call to unity, but the way to unity after you had Donald Trump lie repeatedly and, uh, I mean, heavens to Betsy, uh, accusing uh, the most honorable guy in the race of all kinds of dishonesty. No, but And then yesterday, to finally win, he he goes after his father, says he helped Lee Harvey Oswald. I mean, there's an apology out. I mean, he besmirched Carly. There, as a Christian, Stuart, if he apologizes, then yes, I will forgive him and come on board. But let me tell you, Stuart, but that, I never so, had any saying, fear whatsoever about way, losing the house. But is that the only way? I saw the commercials. 
Oh yeah, you got you got to apologize for something that great. He's shown no capacity to understand the liberty, the religious liberty issue. But I had no fear of losing the house until I saw this weekend the commercial against Senator John Bozeman in Arkansas. They run. Quote yeah, yeah. after quote but, from Donald Trump's mouth, and I then got say, it, Louis, but, and "Look, I'm sorry to interrupt you. This is a dangerous you. time. I, I, I'm yeah. very sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I know who you are. And I, Let's I, work for I, unity I, I here. You, but <laughs> you know what you're saying. He's not going to apologize. What you're saying is, basically, you're giving it to Hillary. Huh? Well, no, Donald Trump will be giving it to Hillary. His only way to be <laughs> Hillary no, no. is Hillary, to be so honest you accept from here that, forward. Then you accept He's that Hillary is going to win. No, I, I, well, when you're at 65% unfavorable and she's at 51, then the odds look that way. So the way to go forward and win is to be honest from here on. And uh, if he does that, then... then okay. but, I mean, holy cow, there are all these just condemnations of women, nasty comments of women. He's got a lot to overcome. Okay. But if he gets honest about them, we'll come together. We'll unify. But okay. I didn't slap. I'm, I didn't join lockstep with John Boehner because he was my speaker when he was lying and wrong. And that's not my personality. Uh, <laughs> heavens to Betsy. Heaven, heaven, heavens to Betsy. I mean, re, uh, uh, I, I, <laughs> I just, every time, uh, I just, he, and uh, listen, um, uh, since he's given that interview, Donald Trump has delivered more one liners to use against him. Uh, that wouldn't make Louis Gohmert happy. And by the way, Donald Trump uh, said that he didn't inherit the GOP. He won it. Um, well, and he's and, absolutely right. Well, it doesn't matter if he's right. The, this conversation isn't about him being right or wrong. It's about a Republican Party that has been imploding for months now, uh, really uh, just delivering themselves a slow, painful death that will continue up until November. There's no way Donald Trump unifies the Republican Party. Come on. Yeah, but L Louis Gomer talking about condemnation of women, uh, pot, meat, kettle. Again, <laughs> you know, what did he say? <laughs> Ted Cruz was the most honest candidate in the yeah. field. Yeah, I know. I have to. That was probably one of my one of my favorite one of my favorite lines from from Louis Gohmert in that entire interview. Probably uh, in well, I, I don't want to say in the the entire uh, the in, the entire time that I've that I've heard uh, Louis Gohmert, but um, you know, uh, I mean, he he opposed a, a bill for uh, for for women scientists because he didn't think that they were smart enough to be scientists. Yeah. He's quite a guy. And keep in mind, he was elected by a majority of the voters in his district. All right, let's get to the Van Jones piece and we'll get to that on the other side. Um, and so you, you have a, a candidate that even when he's trying to appear presidential, seems like maybe what a third grader might think a president would do or say, but doesn't have any good, good answers. So on the other on the, on the other side, though, um, as much concern as there is for the conservatives that he might uh, lose and he might hurt the, the Republican Party, my concern is that he might win and hurt the country uh, because I think Democrats are taking him way too lightly. Huh. I just don't think Democrats understand that there is a wave building for change and change of any kind, of any stripe. Yeah. At this point, I think you know Kermit the Frog could, ru could, I mean, could run. And in fact, in fact, you've said that you think Donald Trump, quote, will probably win the presidency. So what should Democrats, if you think they're not taking him seriously, I mean, what's the prescription? What should they be doing, you think? Well, well, well a couple of things. First of all, um, the hammer blow will fall the hardest from Trump in the Rust Belt where uh, Democrats have tended to be able to take things for granted. Michigan, Pennsylvania, even Wisconsin, uh, places that have had Republican governors either now or in the recent past, um, they have a lot of economic pain. Um, they, uh, the winners in globalization are people like many of the folks watching this show. Uh, we get a chance to go to Walmart. We don't pay very much. We don't even think about it. So the winners are diffuse and ungrateful. But the losers in globalization who lost the jobs because of NAFTA are concentrated and they're angry and they're in the Rust Belt. If Donald Trump goes there, he can pick up votes. Democrats need to be in the Rust Belt right now trying to shore up 
African American and working class white votes pointing out that, for instance, if you have a CEO mm -hmm. president like Trump, you get like a CEO governor like you got in Michigan that gave you Flint. But if you don't make those arguments and you just lay back and think demographics are going to save you and gaffes are going to save you, you will be washed out to see mm -hmm. like all the Republicans have been so far. So, Van, maybe Donald Trump can win some Russ. So there it is. All right. Van, you go ahead and start. Van Jones. Well, um, this was on... Uh, where did I see this? On Crooks, Crooks and Liars. Uh, and the the headline of the piece that they had this clip in was, was Van Jones, Please Calm Down. And basically the writer is saying that, um, uh, you know, Van Jones is being hysterical. And I don't, um, you know, this goes back to the conversation that you and I just had, that there's a very good chance that this could happen. And this writer, I mean, here's the thing, right? There, there was an there was an article uh, up by Robert Reich who was talking about David Brooks from the New York Times, right? Robert Reich is the former um, Secretary Labor of Labor Secretary. under right, right under under Clinton, and um, and David Brooks writes for the New York Times. He's their token conservative writer, and David Brooks was talking about how uh, R Robert Reich was actually you know singing his praises because David Brooks was talking about how. In the media, he lives in this bubble. He rubs elbows with the same people that he does, the elite crowd of intellectuals and, and wealthy people and, and blah, blah, blah. And I think this is a problem that the media has, is that they're surrounded by other people that think like they do. Van Jones is actually pointing out uh, real life issues that Clinton is going to have a problem in the Rust Belt. She's going to have a very big problem in the Rust Belt because, and you know, even though it wasn't her doing her her husband, as far as people are concerned, is responsible for trade deals, and she's been behind trade deals. And you have, and I'm not talking about blue collar workers. I'm talking about the population in general is very uneducated and ignorant when it comes to politics. Let's just leave it at that. When it comes to politics, when it comes to how how laws are made, even though if they watched uh, I'm Just a Bill sitting on Capitol Hill in the 70s, they're still ignorant of how politics and policy and globalization and 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 international uh, treaties and relationships work. So as far as they're concerned, the Clintons were responsible for uh, the devastation of their towns and of their jobs and of their lifestyle. Uh, and I, I think, I think in, in this case, uh, Van Jones uh, makes a very good point. It is going to be, and that said, uh, the two candidates that are most likely going to be running against each other, uh, we're headed for an all-out cluster F of a campaign season. It's going to, well, I think it's going to be the most vicious campaign ever. Thanks to Donald buying, Trump. Ad buying firms have uh, released um, ads that have already been, uh, time that's already been purchased. And the Clinton campaign has purchased a uh, boatload of time for the general election. And we don't have to guess what that's about. Listen, Donald uh, Donald Trump just the other day, uh, he was being uh, asked about how he he probably will not be uh, self funding the general, um, and he his response was, "Look, I'm going to need close to at least a billion dollars for this." At oh, least no, he, a, he he admitted that he's going to he's already talking to lobbyists and uh, Sheldon Adelson just came out and no, I know, I know, Tony, but that's not even that's not even the scary part. I mean, fine, great, he's he's gonna he's gonna go with super PACs and take some funding and everything like that, but that he thinks he's going to need a billion dollars, a billion dollars, is just incredible to me. That this um, is what we're spending on on just one side, just one person's campaign. A billion well, Obama dollars. Obama spent Obama spent almost a billion dollars to get reelected. Well, I know, uh, and, and, and I think it's ridiculous. Well, it is ridiculous, but it's what's going to happen. Uh, and, and this campaign, when it's all said and done, the general will cost uh, well over two billion dollars. 
Uh, it's just the way it is. There's no way around it. There's no way to stop it. And uh, Donald Trump can no longer afford to self-fund this thing. See, as crazy as this sounds, he's only spent, th- and, and it's a lot of money to you and I, and uh, I'm sure everybody listening to us, he's only spent $36 million out of his own pocket to this point. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's a ridiculously low sum of money. But I believe that uh, the love affair with the media is going to be over because equal time will become a much larger issue in the general. And you've got to know the Clinton campaign is going to hold the media accountable for that. Um, And unfortunately, we need to wrap things up because I have to get out of here. Yeah. Okay. so uh, listen up, everyone. (laughs) You can you can find us uh, on the interwebs. At uh, T and Z talk dot com. You can find our Facebook page, Twitter, follow us, friend us, support us, support us for God's sakes, support us. Click on the little support tab at the top and figure out a way that you can support us if you're enjoying the show. Also, spread this far and wide. And again, um, on our contact page, you'll find the number, but the number that you can call and leave us a voicemail that we may or may not play on the show, 559-898-2551, and that's 559-TZ-TALK-1. And uh, right. take it away, Tony. All right, I'm going to go hang out with Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, go meet uh, Cecile Richards from Planned Parenthood, and um, get on with my day. We'll be back on Monday. I'm Tony Truppiano. He is Richard Zombeck, and we appreciate you listening to T&Z Talk. Again, back on Monday, as always, we ask that you be well. It's just riffing now. Words and chords. Not the poetry and the real thing, but not bad for an ad lib. Not good, but. And it's not long enough, so just do a little bit more. And that's nearly done. That's the final credit there. That's the end. <laughs>